Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard. I used to go by TZ Sweezy, but I've been busy as of late, uh, streaming on twitch.tv slash Sir Pinkbeard, doing game dev, playing games, and generally just hanging out with some really cool people. But Blender got a really sexy new update uh, that I thought, you know, I have to redo my videos now. This is too good, and I, I get people asking me during streams, how do I use Blender? I want to get into 3D modeling. And so I'm like, well, check out my channel. So Blender got an awesome update. It's free, it's wonderful, and dang, does it look nice. But let's go ahead and uh, we're going to redo all the Blender videos, starting with what's new in the interface and kind of explain for new people uh, what they'll experience when they get into Blender. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, right off the bat, when you launch Blender, you'll get the option, which I don't have on the screen right now, but you'll get the option to choose between the 2.79 or the 2.8. Honestly, I recommend going with the 2.8. Uh, just set it up because that's the way Blender's going. If you're stuck in the rut, the muscle memory doesn't take that long to get used to. Uh, Blender 2.8 is still in beta though, so some things are going to get fixed. Some things might not be working, but if you're going to get in the Blender beta right now, it's actually going to be worth it. Uh, by the time the full thing comes out, your muscles will have retrained themselves. But one of the really cool things right off the bat is that Blender 2.8 is actually offering templates for different workflows. So uh, if you're used to just using Blender like normal, the general workflow is for you. You get what you normally would expect. The 3D viewport, the default object, you know, your outliner over the right-hand corner, properties, panel, timeline, all of that jazz. But let's just say you want to load in a Blender, you don't want to play around with any of that, you just want to get straight into sculpting, there is now a sculpting template that you can go to, and then when you launch it, it's going to come up here, and uh, you'll be able to sculpt, and by default also apply materials and shaders to your sculpture when you're finished. Uh, now the, the Grease Pencil tool did get a complete work over, so now you've got the 2D animation section. And uh, this is all grease pencil based. You've even got layers and everything. We might talk about this. We might not. I'm not really a 2D guy, so we're not. I'm not going to cover this right now. You also have workflows for visual effects and video editing. But let's go back to the general. Now, also, if you're coming from 2.79, you might be used to right click select, and you can go into edit and preferences and change that. But for right now, uh, the default is left click select all the way in Blender. And actually, I have a new uh, screencast key was written very recently for 2.8 and so I just need to turn that on now that it's on we can continue with the rest of what we were doing all right so we do have uh, left click select like I said by default but it actually is a little bit more than that so in the past you would have to hit B or C in order to get your box or circle select respectively or hold the shift key um, or con is it control key to get the uh, the draw lasso select. Now, those are just kind of active. And so in your 3D viewport, you can um, just kind of default by clicking and dragging. That'll give you a box select, just like with everything else on Windows. But before we get into too much in the 3D viewport, let's talk about the different sections of what we see in Blender, because it can be a little overwhelming the first time. Now, right off the bat, this big window here, I've referred to a few times as the 3D viewport, because that's what it is. We also have a timeline down here at the bottom uh, that will allow you to set frames and play your animations and all that. We have a outliner up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, the outline is a little different and we'll talk about that in just a second. And then we have our properties panel. Now we'll notice a, a full redesign. The, the uh, tabs in the properties panel are all in one column and there's this new active tool which will allow you to change the tool settings. That toolbar kind of got combined over here with the properties panel, but it also exists on the left-hand side and up here, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Before we go any further, you might see we have these workspaces up at the top here, and so we're in the default layout workspace, and you can do basically everything you normally would. You can enter into edit mode, uh, you can still move things around, you can switch into render, you know, and see what does this look like rendered, um, you can do all of that, fine, but there are particular workspaces set up for different things. So if you've got a mesh object selected and you go into the modeling workspace, it will take you directly into edit mode and bring up all the tools that you need in order to create the objects you're trying to create. You can switch over to the sculpting one. It's going to bring you to the sculpting tool workspace, UV editing, 
Uh, if you need to do any UV editing, it'll actually even try to create a UV map for you by default. Now, sometimes these can be pretty good, sometimes not so great, so you're going to end up doing your own most of the time. But this is a nice little gesture of them to try and figure out how we would lay these pieces out a little flatter. We have a texture paint, which is basically the UV editor, but instead of being in edit mode, over here you're in texture paint mode. Then you can switch to the shading workspace. Um, it works with the what used to be the node editor and is now the shader editor. Um, that's pretty cool. Then we've got the animation workspace, rendering, compositing, and scripting, and they're doing what they've always done. You can kind of see how that is. Uh, I don't really cover those that much just because I haven't covered those in the past because I don't do much past the shading section. I don't really do any animation and stuff in Blender. Now let's go back to the layout and talk a little bit more about the the new toolbar settings. So right now we have the select tool active and you can see it's active because in the toolbar uh, there is a blue highlighted box here uh, around the select icon. And you can always toggle back to that tool. So let's say we just click one of the other ones. Uh, if you hit the W key, that will take you back to your select. Now by default, it is the box select, but if you hit W again, you can get the circle select. Um, if you hit the W one more time, you get the lasso select, and then you just the normal click select. Um, and all of these will allow you to select whatever it is you want. But while you see that it's active over here, you'll also notice the, that the actual settings for that tool are up at the top. So with the lasso or with the, you know, with the select tool, you can see that there is a new. So if I highlight that, only what is highlighted will be selected. And what was what was previously highlighted, if it's not again, will be removed. We can say, let's add the selection. We can subtract. Uh, you can do the difference here. So like this one wasn't selected, this one was, we selected them, it flipped that, and then I'm not sure what the intersect does, but it'll work the way it's supposed to. Um, you can also, we have the 3D cursor tool. Um, you know, you can switch into that and move the 3D cursor wherever you want. Shift C will bring it back to the center just like normal, or you can right click uh, with shift and that will move the 3D cursor where you want it to go and then just W back. Now one of the big changes you might notice that when you select the object, you don't have an object manipulator anymore. That is only active when you switch to the transform tool. Now you can select these tools by a couple of different ways. So you can either drag your mouse all the way over here and select them, or you can hit the space bar and bring up the tool selection for this workspace uh, in the 3D viewport, and then you can just choose from one of these. Now you can still do the hotkeys, um, that will work. Spacebar T is now the toggle for the transform tool, but T still tabs the toolbar to show itself or hide itself. We also have a properties, a viewport properties panel, different than the properties panel, over on the right hand side that you toggle with the N key. You'll use both the viewport property and the property panel pretty extensively, so it's good to know where you might find each piece, and we'll talk about them in another video. But for now, just know you can hide them and view them with the T and N key, respectively. Toolbar, viewport properties. And once again, you'll see that there, you know, for every tool that we have, uh, the tools are up here in this toolbar setting now, which is above the viewport header, which is finally at the top. The viewport header used to be down here in blue 2.79. And so now it's actually up where it needs to be, and that is fantastic. All right, and we've seen the viewport property, uh, or the, pro the viewport property, so let's look at the property window. If you're looking at the property panel, um, all of these are in a column. Basically, the icons are the same. Uh, some of them, since they're not, there's no color attached to them anymore, the icon is basically the same, but the color has changed. The one thing that I have a hard time really remembering is the uh, the object property, because I'm, look, I'm used to looking for the orange cube, and it's not there anymore, but it's just this box. It's still the same icon. We have our modifiers, object data, material settings, all of that stuff is the same. The only thing that's added on is this extra tool. Uh, toolbar and so you can actually see particular tools so when we s choose the select tool it brings up the mode uh, and then we can look at the workspace and kind of see like what's going on with all these settings and we can kind of change some of the tool settings that we're working with from this panel here 
But remember, it's also up at the top here, so you don't need to come down to this section any longer to change the tool settings because they will be up here. Now, there are two changes left that I want to talk about as far as the uh, user interface is concerned. Well, two big changes at least, and those are the way that the outliner looks and a new status bar that's put at the bottom left-hand side. So the outliner, uh, it used to rely on layers and you know, you would put things on different layers and then just say, all right, I don't want to see it anymore and change the way you're looking at them. That's not the case anymore. Uh, you can still put things on view layers, but you manage the outliner using collections now. So you can kind of create folders inside the, um, the inside your outliner. That's I think this is actually a better way of working. So if you want to work with a collection, that will allow you to work with different things at a time. Just make sure you name them correctly. Let's go ahead and delete that. The one thing I will say that I don't like about the outliner uh, from 2.79 is that when, what used to happen is when you would parent, let's say we parent the cube to the camera by clicking and dragging uh, and holding shift while we do that, it used to come down and then to the right of the parent object. The child object no longer does that. It just stays there and you just kind of assume and you still see the line in the viewport, but it's not outlined or it's not uh, denoted in the outliner. And I, I find that a little annoying, but the rest of it is pretty great and I enjoy the change. Now, the status bar is a new toolbar down at the very bottom left underneath the uh, timeline. And what you'll see is that there are, uh, you know, the mouse buttons, the, the available options that I can do with my mouse right now with the select tool. So I can either left click to select or deselect. Um, I can, you know, hold shift and select to select others. I can click and drag for box select. Uh, if I change my uh, select tool from box to circle select, it will also say, hey, now clicking and dragging will just be the circle select icon or lasso select or whatever. And it also tells me I can rotate or call up the object context menu. So like I said earlier, or should have said earlier, uh, is that the left click is the select and the right click brings up an object context menu. And this object context menu will change based on whatever it is you're working on, right? In the 3D viewport, you have the option to shade your objects as smooth or flat, uh, set the origin point of an object, all right? Um, you can join a couple of objects together, duplicate, whatever. There are a few things here. You know, you can affect the parenting. Uh, we can just go ahead and clear parenting in case there was any left. Whereas over here in the outliner, we can create a new collection, we can show one level, show the entire hierarchy, show what's active, whatever we need to show. Or in uh, this place, if you don't like the column being right here, you can flip that to the right hand side. So the context menu is pretty cool. Um, but let's say you want to change it up a little bit. Maybe you want to look at things from two angles at once. So what you can do is you can split your viewport by clicking and dragging in this little gap area up here. Now if you click and drag and you say, okay, I've rotated this one, I like the way I can see this, uh, but maybe you accidentally made, I don't know, a new, let's grab another one, maybe we made a third one and we didn't really want this third one. What we can do to remove it is either we can hover over the separator bar, right click and say join area, which will give us the little arrow, uh, and then we can choose which way we want to be joined to what, or uh, we can simply go back to that little gap between the two, click and drag, and then choose our arrow. Now here's the thing, even though we have these workspaces, uh, you can still change the I, uh, like what you're working on. So right now we have the 3D view, but let's say if we wanted to switch over to just the image editor, we could switch to just the image editor in the layout uh, area. However, because we have different workspaces and because you have the UV editing workspace, I, I have found that I'm much less likely to change the editor type that I'm currently working in than to just switch to the other correct workspace that's already set up for me, but to each their own. All right, the last thing I really need to talk about for the user interface uh, and kind of navigation, I guess there's two things. So we've seen panning and ro or rotating around the scene using the middle mouse button. So we can rotate, if we hold the shift and middle mouse button, we can pan around our scene, zoom in, zoom out like normal. But what if we end up all the way over here and just pan way out? We need to get back there. Um, so what we can do is we can select the object in the hierarchy, or the, sorry, the outliner, I'm stuck in Unity these days. 
and uh, press the number pad period and it will take us back to the object that we find. That is a super useful tool for navigation. Uh, and then the last thing that you might find is that Pi menus are everywhere in Blender 2.8. And what I mean by that is if you were to hit Z to change the shading, because that's what we're kind of used to, you get a Pi menu where it's just a circle, circle menu. And you can choose, hey, solid or wireframe or the look dev, which is a new thing that we'll talk about in a future video. Uh, you can also, if you were trying to change the static view, of a of your viewport right you can hit the little um let's see if it will bring it up the accent grave and then choose an option from that um, or you have standard viewport things right if we click on that accent grave again what you'll see is that we have uh, numbers associated with all of these so you can view the camera you can go to the left whatever once you've lifted up the accent grave or you can go up to the viewport here say hey let me see a particular uh, view and you can see camera top bottom front back and you might have noticed that you instantly enter into orthographic uh, when you go to a static viewing angle that is just something new that is in blender you can switch back to perspective if you want just by hitting the numpad 5 key but by default now it is uh, just going to put you in orthographic as soon as you enter into a static viewing angle. So uh, front view, numpad 1, right view, numpad 3, top view is numpad 7, and then to get the back um, view, you get control numpad 1, it will take you to the back view, and it will actually let you know what view you're looking at right up here in the top left. Well, I think that covers about everything you need to know about navigation in Blender, and we've talked about most of the big UI changes. Um, so I think we're going to go ahead and... So I think we'll go ahead and end the video here, and in the next video we'll talk about how we add and remove objects in 2.8. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I'll see you in the next video.